Well, good morning, everybody. This is Jamie Silver with Herf Jones. I hope this finds you well and you had a great weekend. For today's episodes, we're going to cover a little bit on Thanksgiving, a couple of quick demos, and then a reminder on Cubs Parade photos. So jump into that. This is just a fun one. It's a, you know, those ad libs back in the day. This is a yurd lib. So if there's something you want to do, just kind of a little mental break from working on the yearbook and everything else you guys are balancing, um, something to consider. It's just fun. You can do this with some friends or anyone who might be working on the yearbook with you. You can download this, fill out the words, and just have a little bit of fun you know, as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday, Black Friday if you're doing that and all that. So just want to share that with you. Now, moving on to demos, we're going to do two quick demos today because these are kind of common questions that I get. And I wanted to share these two short little videos. They're just a couple minutes each that highlight some of the things that might be helpful this time of year. This first one is on moving spreads. In this tutorial, we'll show you how the advisor is able to move spreads in the ladder of eDesign. When logged in as an advisor, go to the book module. The Move Spread function allows you to shift spreads around in your ladder while keeping all of the ladder information and the page contents intact. Go to the Edit menu and choose Move Spreads. The ladder will then appear in this slightly different view. In this window, you can drag and drop spreads to new locations. For example, I want to place the Spirit Week spread in front of the Homecoming spread. So I'll click and drag that spread up in the ladder. Notice the indicator that appears to show me where I'm going to move the spread. When I release the mouse button, the spread is placed in its new location. You can move more than one spread during a single session. When you've made the moves that you want, it's a good idea to scroll through the ladder a bit to check things before clicking OK. If everything looks good, click OK and eDesign will then rearrange the ladder and change the page numbers as necessary. There are a few situations in which a spread cannot be moved. First, the title page and the last page of the book cannot be moved. They are single pages and they cannot swap places with double page spreads. You cannot move a spread that is in the in preflight, finished, or submitted status because moving the spread would cause the page numbers to change. Pages in this status will appear dimmed down in the move spreads window. Also, you cannot perform any other spread move that would cause one of the in preflight, finished, or submitted pages to move position. If you need to move spreads that are in preflight or finished, you can click the Needs Work link on each page to return these pages to the edited status. You would then be able to move those spreads. If you're printing a partial color book where some pages are set to print in color and some in black and white, you'll receive a notification if the move you request would require one or more pages to change from black and white to color or vice versa. The Move Spreads function is most useful early in the year when you're trying to tweak the ladder and get everything where you want it to be. Let's say, for instance, I realized that I forgot to leave a spread for JV football before the varsity football spread. I would open Move Spreads, Scroll down in the ladder to an empty spread that I've not started working on yet, drag it up, and place it before the varsity football spread. I'll then click OK to commit the move. And that's how you use the Move Spreads function in eDesign. So I hope you found that helpful. Obviously, the black and white reference you can ignore. You know, we typically all have all color books now, but sometimes black and white is used as a special effect, so feel free to do so. I want to share it this time of year, and as you could see, that, that example was more of a high school book, but it applies to everybody, elementary, middle school. This time of year, when you have some pages done, some not done, and you're kind of planning where things are going, and because you submit things most likely all together, you probably won't run into that issue of moving stuff around a submitted page. Um, but it's a great way to help you know, get things where you need to go without having to redo them. Or there's always a backup plan, and I can share that with you if you're interested. But it's basically saving a, saving a page as a template, going where you want to put it, clearing the page, putting it there, and deleting the original. But again, that's a few steps. As you saw in the Move Spread option right under the Edit pull-down menu in the ladder, you can kind of shuffle the pages like a deck of cards. So it's, it's a great tool I just want to highlight. The next video we're going to watch is on placing and cropping photos. I know it seems basic and it is, but there are a couple little tools and a little buttons that I just want to highlight here. So I'll let Mark share that now. In this tutorial, we'll look at some additional features related to placing and cropping photos. First, let's review a couple of things that we previously learned. 
To place an image in an existing frame, you drag and drop the image on the frame from the library panel. To resize the image and the frame at the same time, click and drag on one of the handles with the selection tool. The image is always scaled proportionally. To resize the image inside the frame, you click on the picture manipulation button or simply double click on the image to access the control handles for the image itself. You can then use these circular handles to resize the image inside the frame and you can click and drag on the interior of the image to reposition it in the frame. Click again on the image to exit picture manipulation mode. With that review out of the way, let's look at a few additional items. Take this image as an example. I've placed this image in an existing frame on my layout. I would like to include the top of the building in the frame as well as a little area beneath the feet of the people on the steps. This is not possible with the image frame's current size and shape. In cases like this, you'll want to use eDesign's cropping function. The cropping function allows you to adjust the size and shape of the frame after the image is placed inside it. Select the image with the selection tool. Then go to the control panel and click the button below the picture manipulation button. And that's where I want to pause just for a second. This is one of those little buttons that is easily overlooked and one of the most common questions I get. So, you know, experiment with this. As Mark said, you click on the photo and then you click on this tiny little button. It's really small at the bottom of the screen. So I just want to pause highlight this because this is something that will probably make your life a lot easier as you start you know tweaking pages so we'll we'll finish up here this is the cropping button when you enter cropping mode you'll see the square handles around the frame as well as the larger circle handles around the image itself the parts of the image that are outside the frame are tinted back so that you can see the parts of the image that are outside the frame in cropping mode, you can use the smaller square handles to resize or reshape the frame itself. You can also use the larger round handles to resize the image if necessary. To exit the cropping mode, you can simply click on the image. Let's try that again. I'll place an image in this frame. Then click the cropping button. I can now adjust the frame or the image. To exit the cropping mode, I click again on the image. If you like shortcuts, there's a shortcut to enter the cropping mode. Hold down the control key on Windows, or the command key on Mac, and double click on the image. This will take you into cropping mode. Most of the time, you'll be using the normal picture manipulation mode. But the cropping function is perfect in those cases when you need to adjust the size or shape of the frame after placing the image. What do you do if you want to change the image that's placed in a frame? You can simply drag and drop a new image onto the frame. The new image will replace the old one. What if you just want to remove an image from a frame? Double click on the image to enter picture manipulation mode. In picture manipulation mode, you have selected the image inside the frame and you can go to the edit menu and choose delete. This will delete the image out of the frame. I'll choose edit undo to replace the image. What if you want to rotate an image inside the frame? Take this photo for example. I want this to be a tightly cropped shot of her face, but I would like to have her eyes aligned more horizontally in the frame. I will double click to enter picture manipulation mode. I'll make the image a bit larger in the frame. Then when I place my cursor outside of a corner image handle, I get the rotate icon. I can now click and drag to rotate the image inside the frame. When rotating an image inside the frame, you'll want to be sure that you keep the frame filled all the way around. Let's cover one other item regarding placing images. You can place an image into any closed shape in eDesign. If you drag out an image and drop it on an empty area of the page where there is no frame, eDesign will ask you if you would like to place the image as a background. We'll look at the background function in more detail in a later tutorial. But in this case, we don't want it to be a background, so we'll click No. eDesign will then create a new frame for the image and place it on the page. If you do accidentally place the image as a background, you can remove it by going to the Layout menu and choosing Delete Background Image. And that's the basics of placing and cropping images in eDesign. 
So again, I, I know that was somewhat basic stuff, but I think it's a good reminder. And some of those buttons are just kind of small at the bottom, and I want to you know highlight those as they they will probably save your life on uh, creating a page and saving some time, I should say, in making a job easier. So again, any questions on that? Those are the two demos today. One last thing I wanted to close with here is, and then thank you all for the feedback that you've given me. I've gotten some great feedback on Facebook. I sent photos out of the Cubs parade. You are more than welcome to use these royalty-free, copyright-free for me as a photographer. If you'd like to pick a couple for your yearbook, one or two, or whatever you want to use, if you just want to include some coverage of that event, it was a great event to photograph. I had fun with it, uh, even though I'm not the uh, big fan of sports in general as you as you know if you, those you know me well but it was an amazing event to be a part of the energy on michigan avenue it was just cool to be there in, in person so anyway i shared that out uh, last week via dropbox they're on facebook thank you again for your feedback please feel free to use them have a wonderful week and let me know if there's anything i can do for you thank you